Hello children, how are you? I know by this time you have got used to with this lockdown situation, isn't it? You have learned how to keep, keep yourself confined in the house. You are very busy, that also I know. Helping mom in the kitchen, trying your own hand in the kitchen, isn't it? Baking cake, making uh, chow mein, etc., etc. I can understand that. And uh, you are nowadays busy with uh, finishing the assignments. Uh, remember children, these uh, assignments, be very particular about it and keep it ready and uh, be regular in it. If you do the work regularly, so as soon as the school will reopen, teachers will ask for the copies. So that at that time, you will not feel any trouble if you are very much particular in finishing your everyday's work. Now, let us start with today's session. Uh, we will do today the two poems of Robert Frost, Dust of Snow and Fire and Ice. Now, these two poems are of Robert Frost. Robert Frost is a familiar name to you. You have already read his poem in Standard 9, The Road Not Taken. But just for recapitulation, let me uh, remind you that uh, Robert Frost was an American poet, uh, definitely a prolific poet. Uh, poems are classic that is why we are still studying today also and uh, he was a winner of Pulitzer Prizes got nomination for Nobel Prize so today we are going to start with the first poem that is Dust of Snow short poem uh, let me read out the poem first you also read with me the way a crow shook down on me the dust of snow from a hemlock tree has given my heart a change of mood and saved some part of a day I had rued. Very simple poem. Only two stanzas of four lines each. Uh, have you noticed, children, that there is no full stop in between? No punctuation. It started and it ended. So in that way, you can say in other words that the whole poem gets completed within one sentence. Let me explain the poem line wise first, the literary meaning, then we will come to its inner meaning. The way a crow shook down on me the dust of snow from a hemlock tree. It suggests that definitely the poet was sitting under the hemlock tree and a crow came and it shook the tree. The snow was there. The whole tree was covered with snow. And as a crow shook, the dust of snow, dust of snow means uh, you can understand the dust particles of snow. It's not the dust of earth. The dust particles of snow it fell on the poet and has given my heart a change of mood and saved some part of a day I had rued. As it fell on him, the dust of snow, a change of mood came to the poet. And he realized that he has wasted a part of the day and he regretted that why he has wasted the part, some part of the day and the part of the day that is still remaining, he wants to utilize it. And so a change of mood comes in him and he realized his mistake and he tried to now prepare his mind to utilize the rest of the part of the day. This is the poem actually. Now let us come to it word wise, line wise. First, let me point out few words like crow, hemlock tree, snow. Crow is a bird which is not a very lovable bird. Crow is a scavenger, lives on dead animals. We do not keep crow as a pet. We do not love to hear the voice of the crow like a cuckoo. In other words, crow is a bit ominous. That is, if we see crow flying, we think, we feel that some, some, some dead animal is there. So it is, you can say in other words, a bit ominous. It, uh, it is a symbol of, it is an ominous symbol. Next comes the hemlock tree. Hemlock tree is a poisonous tree. And finally comes the 
cold snow coldness of snow does not show any warmth so if there is a sunny weather what happens automatically our mind becomes very jovial happy we enjoy the day and it's a if it is a cold day snowy day where our mind feels with sadness so if the three things are there that is crow is there snow is there and the poisonous hemlock tree is there does it do all these things does it create a very positive picture in your mind no normally no now poet was sitting under that tree so the whole situation was very gloomy and his mind was also gloomy but when the dust of snow fell on him it brought a realization in him it brought him in a situation which he felt that no all these things if these things are there still we cannot think all these things as ominous we have to find out the positiveness from these ominous or the negative ideas they are ominous they are negative it is a concept only nobody has said that the crow is ominous or the crow himself has not done any mistake to become a bird who lives on the dead animals rather it does some good work for the society hemlock tree a tree it gets the sunlight collects water from the ground and it grows like other trees but it's a poisonous tree and we do not like it so these are not these are actually the set of our mind we have decided that these are ominous and they all gives us negative message or negative vibes to us but poet says that no from these things also from the negative things also we can churn out or we can bring out the positiveness and that we have to do we have to learn that always negative does not bring negativeness to us we can we have or rather we have to keep that potential to bring out the positiveness from the negativeness also hemlock tree it can be some other tree also the poet could take it uh, some other tree also a banyan tree or a maple tree or a pine tree he could take but he took a hemlock tree instead of the crow he could have taken a cuckoo or a nightingale or a sweet singing bird or a beautiful looking bird but he wanted to refer that even among these negativeness positiveness can be brought out so children we should not break down we should not think that all the negative things are going with us we have to find out the positiveness from the negativeness his day has been wasted nothing to do not to cry for that not to do not to cry over the spilt milk it's better that when he realized when the dust of snow fell on him when he realized that now negative can be changed to positive his realization has changed him to a positive person a positive minded person his heart means his mind changed to a positive note and he decided that now he will utilize his time in a better way in a productive way then only the rest of the day will not be wasted same way children as you are doing the positive the negativeness are there coronavirus so many deaths painful deaths you have to stay back at home cannot go outside cannot meet friends cannot meet relatives cannot come to school so many negatives are there but you are trying to make it positive how wow. by cooking by doing gardening by spending time with your parents with your uh, siblings so how you are doing are you crying for that no need it's better to utilize the time that has been wasted let it be wasted but if time is still there we should use it in a positive way 
this is the meaning of the poem children and um, let me tell you i uh, tell you that what is the rhyming scheme of the poem the rhyming scheme of the poem is say crow snow mean tree heart part mood rude so that means the rhyming scheme is a b a b c d c d okay no questions are there given here you have to try to write the summary of the poem what you have understood read the poem repeatedly if required listen to my video repeatedly and try to understand the poem try to visualize the poem then the meaning will come out from it next we will go for the fire and ice now children we will start with fire and ice the next poem of robert frost before i start let me correct myself that in the previous video i have told you that no questions are given of dust dust of snow but it's not correct it's my mistake uh question answers questions are there you please try to write down the answers but the specific answers that are to be written in the copy i'll tell you and in the next day's assignment that is on tuesday i will give you the set of questions from the both the poems which you will try and finish in your copy next let us try to do with fire and ice again let me read the poem some say the world will end in fire some say in ice from what i have tested of desire i hold with those who favor fire but if it had to perish twice i think i know enough of hate to say that for destruction ice is also great and would suffice here also children there is a metaphorical meaning of the poem let us see first some say that the world will end in fire there is a concept among the scientists that the earth will perish one day how there are two views two concepts one is by fire how the fire that is the fire that is burning under the crust of the earth under the, uh, the earth when uh, the top layer will burst one day and the fire the molten fire lava will come out from the earth and it will finish the whole earth that is one concept and the other concept is that that slowly and slowly the earth will be very cold and it will reach to the ice age the beginning of the earth in the same state it will reach so two concepts are there that earth may perish or finish or get destroyed by two ways one is fire and the other is ice so he says that some say the world will end in fire the concept for some people is that the earth will end in fire some say in ice but few people are there who has a second uh, thought school of thought that is it will end in ice from what i have tested of desire i hold with those who favor fire now he says that what i realize what i feel that the earth will perish by fire only his thought is that that fire is enough to finish the earth, that it one day it will burst and the um, fire from the underground will come out and will finish the earth but if it had to perish twice if the earth can get a chance to perish twice or if it has to perish perish means to finish to finish twice then what would happen i think i know enough of it to say that for destruction ice is also great so he says that even ice is also has that potential or that strength that ice can also finish the earth that is coldness or the snow age or the ice age would come and the earth would get finished this is his concept now what is his concept from the poetic point poetic point of view rather uh, not the exactly the scientific point of view he says that the world will end in fire fire of what fire of desire you have noticed the name is given fire and ice fire is a symbol of desire and ice is the symbol of hatred coldness 
how it is explained how can it be explained let us see desire means what desire means the craving or to the uh, too much wish to get something the ardent wish of getting something desire of power desire of money now if a person has the desire of power that i want to be the king the supreme power of the whole world is it good no if someone wishes that i have the desire to have enough enough money is it good no for that what he will do to earn money he will some other day take up some wrong way to earn the money because he has the desire the craving to have enough money so desire of something is not good too much desire is not good it can finish you that is like a fire as a fire can finish a person in the same way the desire of power of money can finish a person so he says that if you say scientists say that fire is to finish the earth poet supports it that yes the fire of desire will finish one day if all the people we are almost going to that way we have desire desire of this desire of that my neighbor is having two cars i wish to have two cars uh, another of my friend has enough money why can't i earn so much money i am running behind it so all these things are finishing our life our personal life our um, miss relations are getting severed we are going through a very traumatic situation so these desires are not desirable we should not have this type of desire these desires are finishing us so he says that these type of desires can finish that if individually we are plagued or we are uh, attacked by these type of desire then one day the earth would come to an end it's uh, automatically will come to an end that fire will finish all of us we will fight with each other we will uh, take all sorts of wrong ways to earn money so that can finish the whole society so earth can get finished by the desire of fire but if it had to perish twice now if it gets a second chance to perish twice or if uh, there is uh, twice the earth can perish then he says that yes ice is also enough ice means hate hatred coldness of among the coldness of relationship among each other we do not bother what happens to our neighbors they have miss my neighbor has fallen sick ill has to taken to the hospital has to be taken we do not care we keep our deaf ears we keep our eyes closed and we do not pay attention to that let others do why should i pain myself hatred coldness of relationship we do not bother for each other very painful that is also enough to finish the earth all will be all individuals will then form an island each nobody will have any relationship with each other that is also enough to finish the art so he says that fire is not only the only thing even if ice also is there coldness of relationship is also there that is enough to finish the art so i think i know enough of hate to say that for destruction ice is also great and would suffice suffice means is sufficient is enough to finish the art so these are the two traits negative traits of our character of the characters of human beings that can destroy us that can finish the art we should not lose all the, our good qualities we should not have so much desire we should try to keep ourselves satisfied contented with what we have definitely there should be some zeal in us to grow up to earn more to achieve something better but it should not go out of the limit and 
on the other hand we should not be so cold to our relations our hatred our jealousy should not reach us to such point that we will forget to help others so this is the meaning of the poem of fire and ice again children i will ask you to go through the video repeatedly if you need think of it try to understand the poem and try to write the summary in your own words how you feel what you feel whatever you have understood about the poem and next session i will give you the questions that are to be written from this poetry from the both the poetries okay thank you children